Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So I recently changed all of the filters and all of the fluid on this tractor, but one filter I didn't change was this water filter. And I honestly didn't really even know what that was about. I, I could see that it was plumbed in to the cooling system on this uh, International 1086, but I wasn't sure, like I said, why they really, I've never seen a water filter on anything before. So I got looking at it and reading it and apparently the cylinder liners on this diesel motor, uh, if the pH gets out of whack in your uh, system, which it can do just over time apparently, uh, it ends up cavitating inside those cylinder liners and can wear a hole in those. So I definitely don't want that. And so what they say is that every 100 hours you should replace this filter. So I don't have any idea when this filter was last done because it doesn't say it, but we're going to go ahead and change that filter. So let's get into it. All right, so it looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. This is a Wix 24071 filter, and I found this on Amazon, and it was $17. So let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, and I did see a video that was talking about that how you can kind of check the pH. I know there are pH strips that you can put and check that, and I don't have those, and I didn't see any of those anyplace. I should have probably asked at Napa, but what I did see was with a voltmeter, you're supposed to be able to check this as well. And what they said was put it on 20 volts DC and put one end on a ground and the other end in your antifreeze, and they said as long as you had less than 0.5 of a volt on that, then the pH should be pretty good. They said if you have above 0.5 of a volt, you need to change your antifreeze. So let's check it out before I end up putting this filter on. I brought that ladder so you can get up here. All right, so let's pull the radiator cap off and we'll see what this looks like. This tractor hasn't been run today, so there's no danger of it blowing up steaming or anything. And you can see the antifreeze down there. And it looks to me like there's plenty of good grounds real close. I'll see. Let's just try this bolt on this exhaust and then the other lead. And it doesn't matter if you go black in the tank or red in the tank, it'll either be plus or minus. And that doesn't matter, they said. It just is a matter if, as long as it's not above 0.3. Okay, so I've got that lead is in the antifreeze. And they said you want to leave it in the antifreeze, not like touching any of the not touching anything metal in there. You want it floating in the antifreeze. So we've got 0.01 I saw. And so that's definitely less than the five. What I don't remember now was if it was five or 0.5. I'm gonna go down here and see if I can find a little better ground. The alternator's right there where I can see it. So let's just put it on that. There we go. Okay, so We've got, I saw 0.1 at one time, but it looks like 0 0.07. If I go in there, and I just want to make sure it's floating in the antifreeze and not touching metal. So there's touching metal is 0.14. We don't want that. We want it just in the antifreeze. So there's 0 0.07 seems to be the most... Uh, what do you want to say? The average of the number? Yeah. So 0.07 seems to be the average of the number that we're getting in there. It's the most common one that right. comes up. Right. So that's not bad. So let's put this cap back on and we'll go change this filter out. All right. So I don't know, you know, like I said, uh, that's the first time I'd heard that, but it sounds good to me. And it almost makes sense if the pH is off. I mean, after all, a lead acid battery, right, is because of the pH in it that makes the electricity. So, hey, it's a possibility. We're gonna put that filter in though. Okay, so I just double checked and confirmed and it says the voltage has to be below 0.4. So we were at 0.07 and so that's quite a bit lower than 0.4. So the pH is good in this, but our filter has a uh, additives in it to keep the pH where it belongs. So let's get this new filter put on here. 
All right, so now that we've checked our pH of our antifreeze with a voltmeter, which I didn't know we could even do, but hey, learn something new every day. And that's why we're here to share it. Uh, but we're gonna change this filter. Now listen to this filter. Hear it shake it in there? So this filter has some kind of, uh, sounds like probably pellets or something in there, but anyway, they're supposed to stabilize and make sure the pH is correct. So that's why it's, uh, it is a filter, but there is also additives in this filter that keep the pH right. So we'll get it switched out. So some of these old internationals came with this from the factory and then they said they sold a ton of these aftermarket kits. I don't know if this is a factory one or an aftermarket one, but I imagine they're about the same. It, like I said, it hooks into the antifreeze system, uh, down here the cooling system, and there are two shutoff valves. There's a shutoff valve here, and there's a shutoff valve back here. And we're gonna turn those both off so that we don't lose any antifreeze while we're replacing this filter. And they turn just, that one turned at least with just finger pressure, so that was nice. I brought a pair of pliers because I was afraid they'd be uh, like froze up. Okay, so we've got our first valve turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this valve off. And again, it was just finger tight too and stuff where I was able to close it just with finger pressure. Okay, we've got our shut off valves off. So hopefully we won't lose all of the <laughs> coolant when we take this filter off. And then some of the filters on this big international were very difficult to get off and some of them came right off. So we're gonna hope for the come right off. The best. Yeah, the best. But I've got my big uh, channel locks that I bought right after I did this filter, these filters on this tractor. Because it had some big old filters on it. So let's see, this is the one that's because it's right to the right to tighten, but being upside down. Upside down is hard to tell, but there we go. It's going to come right off. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is open, take the plastic off this filter. And again, I don't know if that stuff would pour out if I tilt it upside down. So I'll just pull it off like that. I'm going to have that one ready to go on as soon as this one comes off. Oops. Ooh. So I'm going to just do this. I know you probably should do that with oil. But I don't have any oil. <laughs> but I got I got antifreeze. It's oily. Feels oily at least. Okay, so every hundred hours is what you're supposed to do on this. I probably will end up I mean, I don't know if I'll put 100 hours on this tractor the whole time I own it, but every time I change the filters and fluids in this, I'm gonna go ahead and change this one as well. Okay, so with a rag, I'm just gonna tighten that up a little bit. I think that'll do it. Now I'll turn back on the antifreeze valves. Okay, with those open all the way, got my Sharpie, and I'm just going to put the date on it, which this is August. I'm just going to put an 8 of 24. And you can hear the antifreeze filling that up, so I think we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna dispose of this antifreeze. Uh, I just dump it in my used oil uh, can and we'll throw this uh, old filter away, but you wanna be careful with your used antifreeze because it can poison things if you've got any cats running around, which we do, uh, and then a lot of raccoons and stuff. We don't wanna poison anything. So 
dispose of your antifreeze properly. We'll get rid of our trash and we'll wrap this job up. All right, so that does it for this job of changing this uh, water filter on our cooling system. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It definitely helps the channel. And we invite you to subscribe to see more. Have a great day and be safe.